Hi everybody, uh, how are you today? Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Andre, uh, I'm a big Strapi fan and I'm the CEO of Notum Technologies, which is a company where we do custom software development. A lot of that is based on Strapi. We are also official Strapi partner and we did a bunch of stuff around the Strapi ecosystem, like the migration scripts or a few plugins or we migrated a couple of projects for our customers, including the Strapi IO website. If I look tired today, it's because I really am. I have a 10 day old son at home and that little fella really like to keep me awake. So if I talk any nonsense, I'm so sorry. Uh, what, uh, what are we going to talk about today? First, uh, let's have a look on the benefits of upgrading how to do that, how much work it will be, and what are the potential pitfalls to avoid. I will really try to squeeze everything in the 10 minutes. So let's see. Uh, and let's start from the benefits. I guess the main question here is, why should I upgrade in the first place? Should I even do that? Uh, so the short answer would be yes, uh, but uh, let's have a look in, in details. I will start from disadvantages of the new version. There is no support for MongoDB anymore. Also, the migration itself will take you some effort, maybe even the significant one. And uh, during that migration, you will be not able to really ship that much of new features to your customers. So maybe your product development for a limited period of time slow down. But on the other hand, it will definitely get paid off. I mean, you will get the new amazing V4 version with a lot of new functions and much larger ecosystem. Uh, you will get free role-based role access control. That was a paid feature before. Also, you will get future updates, including the security one, <laughs> which I guess is always welcome. And the overall developer experience will be much better. So the development will be faster with the huge marketplace. Uh, you don't have to program that much because for a lot of feature, there is plugin. Uh, so on one hand, you will spend some time on the migration. But on the other hand, the future development will be so much better and you will get, uh, I would say, let's do that. Now, the question is how? So I cannot go into that much details here. Uh, I would suggest following the official documentation. It's quite well written, I would say, but to give you an overall idea. Uh, the migration itself will consist of few steps. You would need to migrate the code. Uh, both backend and admin customizations. You need to then migrate the database because the data structure changed. Uh, optionally, any plugins that you made along the way. And also, uh, last but not least, you need to update all the consumer applications. Why? Because uh, the API responses in Strapi v4 changed. Uh, they are standardized. Uh, they include some metadata. I, I like that. I like that. But of course, you would need to uh, rewrite the API calls from the clients. We try to uh, somehow project how much work is what on a small website with not that much customizations to give you some idea. What is key to success? Preparation. I mean, like always. Uh, and how, how to do that? So first, I would suggest get to know the differences between version 3 and version 4. I will mention most of them today. Ah, not most of them. I will mention some of them today, like uh, the Mongo or GraphQL that was completely rewritten. Uh, and will allow you to do more things, but also REST was enhanced. Uh, and have some GraphQL-ish features now. So maybe the question is, what do you want to use now? And also some more things that I will mention today. Then you need to cleanse the database, which will make the migration for you easier. I will tell you more later in demo. Also, it's nice to have a look on the migration scripts that you will be using. Uh, to So you will be able to enhance them. 
Also, I cannot show you that, but I will tell uh, uh, at least something about it later. And important question here is, should you uh, follow the guidelines and just update the application or should you rewrite it from scratch and now when to do what? So I would suggest if you have a lot of technical depth or you overused Strapi, like uh, we did on one of our projects, everything was custom there. So in that case, sometimes it's better to rewrite. <laughs> Because uh, if you have a lot of technical debt, I'm not sure that you want to just, you know, move it to a new technology. Uh, maybe now is the time to, to rewrite it. Now, I will quickly show you the demo. Here, as you can see, I have running uh, Strapi version 3. Very simple one. Uh, if you have a look, there is just a collection type notes with one text field, which is called text. That's it. Not not very complicated projects, right? Uh, but why I wanted to show you that. Uh, here I have one node uh, with the text. We can check and in a database, as you can see, it looks, I guess you would expect this, right? There is ID, text, and then some metadata. But uh, during the development, you may decide that uh, you don't want text, but the rich text, and you want it to be called description. And uh, because it's during development, you will just delete the text and save it. And now if I go to note, I can write test description, not really, but uh, it's something. But what have happened on the database uh, layer? So if I refresh this, you will see that there is the new column description, but the text is still there. When I run this query, you can see that the text column is still there. Why? Because in Strapi, they didn't want to remove the whole column uh, because you uh, just because you remove it from the model, because this could lead to very unlucky data loss. So the column is still there. Uh, there can be even some DB constraint on that. Uh, so this is something that you need to fix before the migration itself. So have a look on the tables, have a look on the model in Strapi and fix the nuances, the differences. And that will make the running of migration scripts much easier. Also regarding the migration scripts. I would suggest they are publicly uh, available on the GitHub. You will just clone them and connect them to a DB backup. Yes, guys told me that I should tell you at least three times to, uh, to a backup, you know, snapshot of staging or, or some DB full of data. Uh, then you will migrate the code base, run the new Strapi v4. That will create a new empty database for you. And now you need to migrate the data. So you can just connect this script to old and new database and run it. For a small project with not much customization, it can do the job. But uh, for a bigger project, I suggest to read the documentation, have a look over, because it will allow you to even create a custom migrations. Uh, maybe you want to enhance something along the way or, or uh, anything. So this is a bit of a demo and uh, what to be careful about when migrating the database. Now, how much work it will be? That depends on the size of the project. Uh, obviously, the bigger project, the more effort. Then how much custom code do you have? Which database you are coming from? For Mongo, there is one more, DB, uh, one more step uh, and some other minor factors. But overall, uh, for small projects, I would say it will take a day or two, just within a few days, typically. Uh, Medium-sized project, from our experience, tend to be somewhere between two to four weeks. Really depends on the project setup. For example, the Strapi IO website took us a month, uh, including everything, the front end, back end, and, you know, testing and... and uh, um, 
DB backup, second time. <laughs> and everything, uh, but in Strapi, they are really leveraging the power of Strapi. So they are using a lot of features. And uh, for huge websites or applications, it's hard to say. I just suggest here to think, do I want to just uh, follow the guideline and update, or do I want to rewrite, or maybe something in between? Now, what are some potential pitfalls that you want to avoid? Uh, immersion depth is different. So in version four, uh, there is a maximum immersion depth of three. So if your project in version three was heavily based on deeply nested components, you would need to rethink that. Also, if you are coming from the Mongo world, learn a bit about SQL databases because they behave differently. Plugin possibilities will be limited. I mean, in version three, you just use the replace and it was very easy to do anything, but it could have gotten broken during the upgrade of Strapi. Now the plugin API is stable. That's the reason why we have the marketplace with so many plugins, but the possibilities are, are limited. Also, like I told you, uh, update and fix the scripts on, on snapshot of at least staging or something with a lot of data. This is the third time. Yes, do a DB backup and triple check the migrated data and ask for help if needed. Many people already migrated the project and they will be able to, to help you or you can reach out to any partner or to us. Now, and let's end on a good note. I would say let's migrate. It will definitely get, uh, it will definitely pay off. So thank you very much. Uh, it was nice to have in the presentation here. If you have any concerns or you want to help with any Strapi project, uh, feel free to reach out and otherwise see you at Hopin. Bye.